my name is uh, Kenny Kesey. I think I started cutting hair, say, way back in 98. 98, I went to barber school. Well, I think the barber shop is really, especially like you say in the black community, it's really it's all you got, you know what I'm saying? Because that's the only ownership you see, you know what I'm saying? Like you say, it's the only thing that the blacks really own now. It ain't like we own in you no know, grocery stores or last thing. I think we got is the beauty shop and barber shop. So it's in the community for the black barber shop, you know. It's, they got to own a building. That way they can control their own destiny, you know what I'm saying? My name is Louis Maurice Taylor. I've been cutting hair ever since, oh, 1977. I started at Plans Barbershop in Memphis, Tennessee, after which I worked at several other barbershops in Memphis, Tennessee. The barbershop is a vital part of the community based on you get a wide, you get every range of person, not a wide range, but every range. You get from hobos to millionaires and everybody that helps the world go round, such as your plumbers, your electricians, your car salesmen, um, your producers, your farmers. If it's in America, they come get their hair cut. You say, man, you got generations, man, that been coming to here. You know what I'm saying? You got life from the great granddaddy to the granddaddy to the daddy to the son now the sons they got kids now so you know in the black communities the black barbershop is basically the last black man's social club it participates and adds and assists with a lot of civic functions help to raise scholarships helps politicians and helps a lot of voters a lot of the churches. I'm with Martin's Chapel AME Church, and we're getting ready for our Man's Day, so this is one of our events that we're sponsoring. It's a fish fry. The participation of the Black Barbershop is consistent in the black neighborhood because it's a part of the neighborhood. And we're doing this uh, fish fry at this location because it's a prime location where a lot of people come and get their haircuts. Or do of course, the Black Barbershop was established years ago. But the thing of it was, was that by being part of the community, it was like a, I don't know, you might, you might say a, a conversation point where most of your ministers would come to, to uh, get messages for the sermons. Most of your politicians come to black barbershops to participate and associate with the, with the community and to find out what ports are what pros and cons about the community. Every conversation goes on because everybody has their own viewpoint of different topics. Talk about politics, which is supposed to be a taboo. Talk about sports, we talk about relationships, we talk about uh, parental uh, movements and child upbringing. We aid in raising a lot of kids, you might say. Uh, uh, especially little boys, you might say. Uh, Barbershop affected me in growing up because my dad brought me here as a young child and we got to hear the older folks talk, uh, and, you know, as well as we came to get our haircuts, but it, it gave me a chance to listen to the older people and hear what they had to say. The Black Barbershop has, has been a part of a black man's social life for years and, and it would always will be. Man usually come get his haircut at one, so, you know, anywhere from one to 99. Even when they, you know, die, you know, we go to the funeral home and cut their hair. I think I learned a lot of moral stuff growing up here in the barber shop. Uh, just listening, you know, you found out about life and, and how to live life and uh, how to solve your problems. I don't know, it's, it'll always be there. You know, um, it's like a, a part of life in the black neighborhood. It's like raising up a child.